Do you want to live stream your security camera feeds to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or anywhere else? Well, you can. Whether you have an IP security camera or even an analog system, in today's video, we're going to show you how you can live stream your security camera feeds using the free open source broadcasting software, OBS. A couple of months ago, we started a brand new private Facebook group for our dealers. On that page, we've been streaming various cameras around our offices via Facebook Live. We've gotten a lot of great feedback from that. I know people are really enjoying it, but we've also gotten a lot of questions on how we are doing that. Well, it's actually pretty easy, and in today's video, I'm going to show you three different methods for live streaming your security cameras via OBS. You can get started streaming your cameras right away with very little setup, and here is everything that you're going to need. First and foremost, you're going to need a security camera. Now, you probably already have this. If you don't, then why are you even watching this video? It doesn't really matter if your camera is IP or analog, just keep in mind the type of your camera when we get to the three different methods. Next, you will need a computer with an internet connection and relatively fast upload speeds. Now, the minimum upload speed here is going to be around three or four megabytes per second, depending on the platform that you're gonna be streaming on. But the faster the upload speeds, the better. Next, you're going to need OBS installed on that computer. Now, OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software, and it's pretty much the standard for streamers everywhere. It's simple to use, it's got a ton of features, and best of all, it is totally free. So click the link in the description and go ahead and download OBS onto your computer. Next, depending on the method that you use to stream your cameras, you are going to need a couple of additional items. You're going to need either your IP camera's RTSP address, or you're going to need an internet browser, and for the third option, you're going to need a video recorder and an HDMI capture card. So how do you know which method is best for you? Well, let's find out. Like I've already mentioned, we're gonna show you three different ways to live stream your cameras. The first way is a direct live stream straight from your camera using the RTSP address. The second option is going to be screen recording your camera with a web browser, and the third option is going to be streaming your recorder feeds with an HDMI capture card. First, let's talk about your RTSP address. This is probably the simplest method that is going to get you up and running in no time. RTSP stands for Real-Time Streaming Protocol. And what this protocol does is it allows your security camera to communicate with third-party devices and applications and servers. In our case, the third party is going to be OBS. And it's just a really simple and seamless way to stream your cameras. It's fast, it's easy to set up, and you don't need any additional hardware. There's no middleman, it's just your security camera and OBS. But there are a few drawbacks to this method. First, the RTSP feed really isn't that stable, and so you might experience some lag, especially if you're streaming at the mainstream uh, if it's like a 4K camera uh, with high FPS, you're gonna experience some lag and some low latency, and you might have some other video issues. Furthermore, this method only works with IP cameras. If you have an analog camera, there is no way for you to get an RTSP feed straight from the camera without going through a DVR. The last drawback here is that you're only streaming raw feeds directly from the camera. So if you have any intelligent events or any kind of markers on the screen, you're not gonna be able to see that through the RTSP feeds. The next method is also really simple. This involves just pulling up your web browser on your computer, typing in the IP address and getting the live view, then simply just capturing your screen or your that particular window and streaming that. This is another really easy method and it's a good way for you to show off intelligent markers if you have something on the screen like Univue's deep learning cameras, for instance. But this does take up more real estate on your computer. You won't really be able to use your computer if you are recording the full screen, but this could work if you just have a PC that is fully dedicated to your security cameras. If you wanted to pull this up and set it there for a while, you totally could. And the last method is going to be streaming with an HDMI capture card. An HDMI capture card is simply a device that connects to your computer and allows you to uh, run an HDMI input directly into OBS. There are lots of options for this on the market ranging from 20 bucks to uh, a couple hundred bucks. The one I'm using back here is a Hopog HDMI device. We also have an Elgato capture card floating around here. We use these quite a bit here for recording NVR interfaces 
taking screenshots for blog posts. Since we already have these on hand, we do use them often for live streaming. With this, you can use either an IP camera or an analog camera, as long as it's connected to a DVR with an HDMI output. And it doesn't take up extra real estate on your computer because the streaming is coming from your NVR. Once you've picked the method that you're going to use, we're ready to jump onto the computer and get OBS set up and ready to go. So once you click the link in the description below and download OBS, it will take you through a startup wizard that will help you adjust some of the settings based on uh, what you're gonna be doing with OBS. This is not a full OBS tutorial. There are plenty of resources all over the internet if you want to get a more full grasp on what this program can do. But just to get you up to speed, if you've never opened OBS before, this screen right here in the middle is the monitor. It's gonna show us whatever is being streamed or recorded. Right now this is black because we don't have any sources. Which brings us down here to this panel, which is the sources panel. Uh, if we click the plus button, this is gonna let us add a ton of different sources uh, depending on what we want to be streaming or recording. All right, in settings, first let's jump down in here to the video tab. And you can see that we have our base canvas and our output resolution, as well as our frame rate down here. So right now we have the base resolution as 1920 by 1080. However, I know a lot of times we have security cameras that are above this 1080p resolution. Personally, I don't recommend streaming higher than a 1080p resolution, simply because most platforms are going to reduce the video quality anyway during a live stream. Plus, the higher the resolution, the lower quality the stream is gonna be, especially if you have lower upload speeds. So I'm gonna leave this base canvas resolution as 1920 by 1080, and the output resolution right now is also 1920 by 1080. If you have lower internet speeds, you can reduce this to something like 1280 by 720. And what that's gonna do is take your 1080p video and stream it at a lower resolution. Again, the lower the resolution, the higher quality your stream is gonna be, the less lag you're gonna have. So unless you have really good upload speeds, I recommend switching this down to 1280 by 720. Now we have our frame rate down here. Uh, this pretty much is gonna depend on the frame rate of your camera. It, you can choose anything you want here. If you're streaming a camera that is 30 frames per second, for instance, you can change the frame rate to 30. Next, I'm gonna hop up here to output, and this is where we actually adjust the quality of our stream. We have two different modes here. We have simple settings and advanced settings. For this tutorial, we are going to stay here on the simple menu. So bitrate, this is gonna be an important number. This is the amount of data that you are streaming every second. So the higher the bitrate, the higher quality the stream is gonna be, the less lag, all that kind of thing. But there are a couple of catches here. First, you're going to want to look up the bitrate requirements for whatever platform you're streaming on. Again, we stream mostly on Facebook, which does cap out at 6,000 kilobytes per second. In my understanding, this is true for most platforms, so I just always leave this on 6,000. Theoretically, we could increase this to 8192 kilobytes per second, which is what we typically recommend for 4K cameras. But in this case, when we're streaming to something like Facebook, that extra bit rate really isn't going to help us, and in the long run, it might end up hurting us. So just keep this at 6,000 unless you know that the platform you're streaming on is compatible with higher bit rates. But here's the other catch. We are going to need to keep our upload speeds in mind for this because we don't want our video bitrate to exceed our upload speeds. For instance, I can have this at 6,000 kilobytes per second because my upload speed is about 10,000 kilobytes per second or 10 megabytes per second. So before you set your video bitrate, you are going to want to run a speed test so you know exactly what your upload speeds are. That way, if you only have like a three or a four megabyte per second upload speed, you'll know that you need to keep your video bitrate at around 3,000 or 4,000 kilobytes per second. And now I will throw a handy chart up here on the screen so you can see exactly what your limitations are going to be if you do have to have a lower bitrate. Now, this is what we have found as acceptable configurations per upload speed. Your results may vary, so if this doesn't work for you, feel free to play around with these numbers a little bit. And while you're looking at that and crunching those numbers, I'm gonna have a sip of coffee. Okay, you guys ready? Feel free to pause it if you're still looking at that chart. Otherwise, we are moving on. I'm going to completely ignore audio bitrate here because we're not streaming audio, we're simply streaming the video from our cameras. 
if you do have a camera that has a built-in mic, then you will be able to pull that audio stream in as well. But honestly, just leave this at the default 160. You're not gonna need anything more than that. And at the bottom, we're just gonna click OK. So far, everything that we've done in OBS is going to be the same regardless of the method of streaming that you've chosen. Now, as we start to build up our stream and set up our media sources, this next part is going to be different for each method. So first, let me show you how to pull in your IP security cameras RTSP feed. The first thing we're gonna do is come down here and click on the plus button to add a new source. This source is going to be a media source. So we will click that. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it IP security camera and click OK. And now we have the properties for our new media source. By default, local file is selected, but we don't want local file because we are going to be streaming via the network. Network buffering, we are going to turn this up to eight and reconnect delay, we're going to turn this all the way down to one second. Feel free to check use hardware decoding when available if you do have some good hardware in your computer. Now we just need to add the input. Now this is going to be your RTSP address. The RTSP address is going to depend on the type of camera that you're going to be streaming. For instance, the camera that I have today is a Uniview camera, so I'm going to type in the Uniview specific RTSP address. And here is what that looks like. Now it may look confusing at first, but don't let this scare you. All you need to do is swap out those color-coded variables with your own information. Your username, your password, your IP address, your RTSP port, which I will show you how to find momentarily, and your stream. Most of the time, this is gonna be zero for your mainstream. However, you can also pull in the substream if the mainstream is having video issues. The example there is what this might look like if my camera was on the IP address 192.168.1.180. And in this instance, it would be pulling in the substream. We can also use the RTSP stream to pull in cameras off of an NVR. This is what that would look like for Uniview. In this example here, we would be streaming the substream of the third channel of the NVR found on 192.168.1.180. Now that's Uniview. At this time, we do carry two other product lines, R series and H series. So let me show you what this would look like with those cameras. First, here is an R series camera. It's a lot simpler than the Uniview RTSP feed. All you need here is your IP address, your RTSP port, and the number there for your stream. Again, zero for main and one for sub. If you want to stream cameras off of an R-Series NVR, all you have to do is swap out that C1 with whatever channel you'd like to stream. Again, in this example, we are streaming the third channel. Finally, if you have an H-Series camera from us, or even if you have a hike vision camera, this is the RTSP address that you'll type in. The only difference with H series is that instead of zero for main and one for sub, our stream variable would be zero one for main and zero two for sub. And again, if we are streaming an NVR, we can swap out that one at the end for whatever channel we'd like to stream. And once again, in this example, we are streaming the substream of channel three. If you have a camera from another brand, you can always try one of these to see if it works. If you're still having trouble, you may just need to contact your distributor to figure out what the specific RTSP address is for your cameras. So here is the camera that I'm going to be streaming today. I'm going to come in here and click Setup. I'm going to click Network and Port. Under Port, we can see our RTSP port is 554. That's the default for most cameras. If you have an R-Series or an H-Series camera, it's probably also going to be 554, but it's always nice to double check. So an in input, here is the RTSP address that I'm gonna type in. First, and this is gonna be the same for pretty much any IP camera, RTSP colon slash slash. Next, we are going to add in our login credentials, which is uh, for this camera, admin is the username, then colon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a exclamation point. After this, we are going to hit the at sign and then type in the IP address of our camera, which in this instance is 192.168.122. After the IP address, we are going to pop in another colon and type the RTSP port number 554. Then slash media slash video one. And that's all that we need to type in here, and we are going to click OK. 
And there we go, our RTSP was pulled into OBS. And you can see that since we do have a 1080p base resolution, in other words, this monitor right here is 1080p, we do have some adjustments to make because the security camera that we're streaming is higher than 1080p. So I'm gonna grab these resizing handles here and I am just going to drag the security camera down to fit inside this window. We're downscaling the security camera to 1080p and then once we stream it, remember we did set our uh, stream resolution to 720p, so it's gonna downscale it even more. But now, this camera is ready to stream. Let me show you another way of getting this camera in. So we're gonna come in here to Add Media Source. We're going to click Display Capture and click OK. Now, uh, we can either capture the cursor or not. I'm gonna unclick that just so our cursor is not uh, floating around on the screen somewhere. This works best if you have two monitors. I don't have two monitors, so uh, once I minimize this, I'm not gonna be able to see what we're, we're recording. But if I kind of drag the window out of the way there, uh, you can kind of see, let's click Live View and uh, OBS. So you can see that I'm able to stream my screen here with all of the intelligent markers uh, available. This does have the downside of taking up real estate on your computer. Again, unless you have a, a second monitor, which is nice to have for something like this. Or, as I mentioned earlier, if you do have a dedicated computer just for your security cameras, you could do that as well. But the way I like to do this is by streaming my NVR. And to do that, again, I have the HDMI capture card connected here. I have my NVR plugged into that capture card. So now I'm just going to add that capture card as a video source. And to do that, I'm going to click Add, come down here to Video Capture Device, and we can name this NVR. I'm gonna click OK. And here we have the device set as the Hopog Sienna Video Capture Device. Um, whatever your video capture device is, you'll be able to find that here. Uh, and there we go, that is my NVR's interface popping up here. And I'm just gonna click OK, I'm gonna leave everything at the default. And now I can stream my NVR. So I'm just going to double click the window here for our IP camera, and that's gonna make it full screen. Once I stop moving that mouse around, that little menu is going to go away. There we go. And now I have my IP camera streaming through the NVR. And because we do have those intelligent markers set up on the NVR, uh, we are able to stream those as well. This is my favorite method of streaming an IP camera because I don't have to worry about the RTSP feed cutting out. Uh, this is a lot more stable, a lot less laggy, and easier to control. Uh, but again, while this is streaming, you can't really access your NVR from the HDMI interface uh, without that showing up on the stream as well. So keep that in mind. And that's pretty much it. Depending on which method you've chosen, you are now all set up and ready to go. Uh, you can come in here to settings and to stream. And this is where you will connect OBS to whatever platform you're streaming on. Again, we have Facebook Live set up here. So we would pull our stream key in here, uh, which changes every time. So we have to copy and paste each time we wanna go live. And then we simply start streaming. I know this was a lot of info. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave those down in the comments below or reach out to us. Give us a call, send us an email. We're always happy to help you out with stuff like this. Thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.